feel all this death? Jean, it was just a dream. First and foremost, I'd like to give all honors and salutations out to the apostles and the elders of GMS for teaching this truth. And the special salutations out to the Akim and Aqua that are out here pushing this truth with 144% diligence who are listening, learning. Unto you, I say Shalom. <laughs> well, there it is. <laughs> truth in plain sight, right? Okay, so see, this is... Um, this is why we say it's important, you know, to do your research on words and the etymology of words, right? And even symbols are important to do research on because a lot of times things are hidden, are hidden in plain sight right in front of our face. Um, and without doing the research, um, they'll go right over your head, okay? Um, case in point, I researched the meaning of the symbol X, right? And I have to say, knowing the enemy and the way he works, I wasn't too surprised in the meaning. All right, so let's get to it. X. As a sign, this symbol or marker can also be understood as a crossing over to another dimension. All right. Another definition. Transcendent. Going beyond ordinary limits. Superior or supreme. Theology of a deity. A person revealed as a god. Another is transformation. The process of changing or being transformed as in a caterpillar to a butterfly. To undergo subtle or radical change. Yet it also represents virtue and eternal life. <laughs> I swear you can't make this up, right? So there it is. The elect men of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh are truly the real X Men of this world, okay? And Esau knows this, hence why he makes these movies of these characters with supernatural or godlike powers, right? So here we are sitting here watching the trailer of the latest X Men Apocalypse movie, where the main villain is representing, obviously, as Yahweh Shah. And when he returns to Earth, he's returning to gather the elect X-Men from all over um, the Earth from being lost for following blind leaders. OK. And when he finds them, he increases their supernatural powers. OK. And when they ask him who he is or what his name is, he replies, and I quote, I've been called many things over many lifetimes. Ra, Krishna, Yahweh. <laughs> So it's blatant to see Esau goes into the Bible in order to make these movies because he knows the true elect men of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah are going to be gods here on earth. Okay, receiving immortality and godlike powers. But before we can do that and get to that point, we must be patient, right? 
um, enduring with long suffering. We got to go through the trials and tribulations here in life, okay, to be tried in the fire of adversity, okay? So I pulled some precepts um, out of the scriptures to confirm this exact truth, okay? So let's go. We're going to start with Ecclesiasticus 2.4. Whatsoever is brought unto thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low state. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Okay. So being in a low state, meaning in these fleshly bodies, okay, in these chains of darkness, okay, poor. All right. And the fire or the furnace um, is the fire of adversity, meaning we must stand strong in this faith uh, for this word, right? In the shadow of the valley of death in this defiled land. We have to endure, right? So that brings us to 1 Corinthians 3.11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Yahweh Shah. Now is any man built upon his foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, okay? So this is why it's important that we do the work, okay? Building a solid foundation in this truth upon the word of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, okay? We hopefully elect aim to be as gold, silver or even precious stones all right which are purified in the fire and it can withstand it all right but if built on wood hay or stubble what will happen to your foundation when it is tried in the fire of adversity which is which is obviously going to be turned up full blast here um very soon in jacob's trouble okay so this is why it's important to know what manner you are of person okay and doing the work diligently all right. Constantly building yourself up in this truth by faith on your foundation of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right. So let's continue. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work for what sort it is. OK, now that brings me to Second Peter 311. And those of you who are know who are um, who are learned know this, seeing that seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversations and godliness? Okay, all right, so there it is. What manner of person are you going to be? You have to check yourself, you know, do spiritual inventory, you know, even with your teachers that are teaching, you know, whether it's out here on these highways and byways or, or doing these lessons that you do, that, you know, you sit down and watch, which uh, this is why we always say, you know, well, I like to pull um, 1 Corinthians 5.21, prove all things and hold fast to what is good. And that includes me, right? So when I, this is why when I do these lessons, right, when I do these sit downs, um, I ask that you follow along by breaking out your Bible, you know, writing down the verses and going back, you know, and checking the precepts, you know, doing your, doing your diligence, doing your research, because too many wicked shepherds are out here scattering the sheep. All right. And for those that are doing so, they remain in the congregation of the dead and will be cast into utter darkness. All right. And if you follow them, you will be the same. All right. And that echoes Jude one thirteen. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is revealed, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Okay, so let's break this scripture down. What's a raging wave? Okay, this is why we go into the Strong's Concordance. It's a Greek word, G2949, of impulse and restless men tossed to and fro by their own passion. And the word sea. G2281, metaphorically of the ungodly men, all right? And wandering, that's G4107, metaphorically of the evil teachers as wandering stars. Wow, all right? Stars being G792, of a certain false teachers described as wandering stars, as if the stars intended for light and guidance became the means of deceit by irregular movement, right? So this is why it's important that we study and do the labor and work hard in this truth, right? So you are not deceived. Okay, moving on. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 3, 9. For we are laborers together with Yahweh. For ye are Yahweh's husbandry. Ye are Yahweh's building. Okay? Now, husbandry, broken down in the Strong's, is G1091, meaning tillage of the ground, planters, planting the seeds. Okay, this is why I always say it's you never underestimate the power of planting a seed. Okay, because even in simple conversation, when you drop a jewel, okay, one word can spark someone's inquiry for this truth. All right, so this is why it's important, right? Now let's go to Hebrews 2, 10 and 11. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many men, many sons unto glory to make 
to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. Right, okay? So this is the purpose. This is the purpose, I should say. This is the charge to bring as many men as possible to the light, to this truth, because we are joint heirs with our captain and our captain being Yahweh Shah, right? So this is a charge that's put on us. Hebrews 2.14, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, okay? He being Yahweh Shah took part in this fleshly body in these chains of darkness and had to go through being tried in the fire and purified through suffering and persecution, just as we have to, okay? And we will soon see that uh, very soon here with Jacob's trouble. Let's continue. That through death he might destroy him that had power over death, that is the devil, which we know as Esau, and deliver them, who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now, who is subject to bondage their whole life? It'll be us, the Israelites, okay? We've been in and out and back into bondage all throughout the scriptures, okay? And this one here in the land of the north, a.k.a. America, is our last one, okay? And this is what we saints patiently wait for, our salvation, right? Okay, let's go to Romans 8, 11. And if Yahweh, and if Yahweh shall being in you, the body is dead because of sin, right? But the spirit is life because of righteousness, but if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shah from the dead dwelleth in you, he that's raised up in Yahweh from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Right. So there it is. OK, so this is why we do the work and patiently wait and hopes to be raised up in glory. Right. Because his spirit resides in us as his children. OK. All right. Let's continue. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors. Not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Right. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. All right. So we are in debt to this truth as the elect men out here doing this work. Right. And to mortify the deeds, meaning to suppress them, to deny them. Gain control over your thoughts, your feelings and emotions. Right. This is why we say the spirit constantly fights with the flesh. OK, so case in point, when you think to do something, you know, wrong or wicked, it's that inner voice or that spirit that's letting you know that you shouldn't do it. OK, it's a constant fight, whether it be through less lust, greed, envy, strife, vanity, whatever it may be. OK, this is why we have to be changed out of these bodies, because they constantly, constantly want to go off. OK, let's continue. For as much as ye are led by the spirit of Yahweh. There are the sons of Yahweh, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Right. So this is why it's written, the truth shall make you free. Okay. Because when you have this truth, you no longer have fear. Okay. Because the only fear that you really have is fear of the Heavenly Father. All right. When you have this understanding, you are free from the fear that's pushed through the earth. All right. Through Esau. All right. And all of his devices. Okay. So let's continue. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby ye cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. Right. And this is how we know through the spirit, right, that we believe that we are the elect men of Israel. The Rakakwadash has come upon us that we may have this understanding to do the work. All right. It's about faith. Right. So let's continue. And if the children then heirs, heirs of Yahweh and joint heirs of Yahweh Shah, if so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Right. So this is why we labor in this truth day and night as the hopeful elect. All right. To be to be unified, to be to be glorified and unified together with our father, with our power. Right. So let's continue. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. OK. So this is why we really don't give a damn about this kingdom nor anything in it, okay? Esau can keep all of his damn fiat money, all these damn snap together as cars he's got out here. We patiently wait for this bitch to burn, to be honest with you, okay? This is why scripture says rise and depart for this is not your rest, okay? This is not our estate. And so this kills me when I see our people out here talking about we need to vote, you know, this Black Lives Matter nonsense. The elect men await and glory patiently waiting for the coming of our power. This is what we wait for. We wait for those 
for those glorious bodies. You know, we wait for our glory, for our crown of life. OK, we give a damn about this kingdom. It is defiled. Right. Let's continue. For the earnest expectation of the creature awaited for the manifestations of the Son of the Most High. See, I love that verse. This is one of my favorite verses. Because basically what it's saying is, is, is even the rest of the nations are awaiting for the righteousness to come into rule. All right? Even though they're going to fear us and they're going to have to get that ass whooped, they know that they'll be treated fairly. Right? Um, they'll have fresh air to breathe. There'll be no chemtrails. You know, there'll be clean water to drink, no fluoride, real herbs, you know, to heal the body, no medicines, highly nutritious foods to eat. You know what I'm saying? No, no GMOs. Everything created anew, better than in the beginning, you know, in complete total paradise, ruling in righteousness. As the scriptures say, all the nations will rejoice, right? And this is a fact because it's been written, all right? Let's continue. For the creature that was made subject to vanity not willing, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same and hope. Right. So you see, we were created in sin and corruption. All right. All that's here is vanity and vexation of spirit. OK. And for that same reason, we have hope in doing the work and faith. All right. Of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. All right. So this is the test. OK. Let's continue. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of Yahweh. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Right. Because we are the ones that are out here sighing and crying. Right. We are the ones that are out here uh, condemning this place. You know, you know, crying to the heavenly father that he bring in and bring ruin to this kingdom, to this wicked ass place. Right. So let's continue. And not only they. But ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, awaiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our bodies. Right. So we are in we are in corruption. All right. And hell in these bodies. All right. This is why it kills me when I hear these these pastors or the, these Christians out here saying that, you know, they're saved by the blood and, and, and all this, which is madness, because we know that salvation comes in the end. All right. No one will know until those chariots come and start beaming us up. And until then, we remain hopeful in doing this work. That's how it works. All right. So let's continue. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. True. Right. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? Exactly. But if we hope for that, we see not. Then do we with patience, meaning suffering, wait for it. So that's how this works. All right. And that's the ultimate prize to receive that salvation, to get them heavenly bodies. All right. So we'll be perfect in every way. All right. And even with the new covenant, we won't be able to sin nor go off because the heavenly father will write them same laws into our hearts. Right. And that brings me to Jeremiah 31, 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write them in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. So there it is. Right. So for some of those, for some of us to say the laws are done away with, <laughs> you know, how can they be when the new covenant lets us know that they'll be written? Those same laws will be written into our inner parts. All right. So we'll be perfect. We'll be perfect in every way. So that's the only way really to be able to keep um, the laws. Right. This is why, you know, Judges 511 says we rehearse the righteous acts. OK, keeping them to the best of our ability. OK, that we may know by being magnified through Yahweh, through our faith and our works that we may be righteous. All right. We have to rehearse the righteous acts here. You know, the actual show isn't the you don't rehearse during the show. You rehearse. You rehearse before the show. And this is what this whole period is. This kingdom. This this is a rehearsal period. Right. For the coming of the Lord. For the coming of the bridegroom, you know, when 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 a, when a woman gets married to royalty, she has to be raised up, you know, to be able to to be able to fit that position in royalty. She has to rehearse those righteous acts. Right. And us being the bridegroom, that's what we wait for. Right. So. All right. Moving on. All right. Um, Psalms 82, 6, 7. OK. I have said ye are gods and all of you are the children of the most high. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. OK. And that's exactly um, um, what's happened. OK. Um, we are gods 
as Yahweh says, okay? But we will fall, fall being a root word meaning uh, Nepal, Nephilim, falling from a great estate, or falling from a great state. Just like um, in uh, Genesis, the sixth chapter, when talking about um, there being giants in those days. Those giants were actually Israelites who fell from glory, right? But that's a whole, that's a whole nother lesson because too many, too many cats go off on that, all right? But coming back into the lesson, okay, we're going to go to John uh, 10, 34, 35. Yahweh answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken. Right. So, and this is why our spirit bears witness to this truth, man. You know? All right. Now, second Corinthians five, two and one. For you know that if our earthly house is if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, meaning when these bodies die, um, we have a building of God, a building of Yahweh, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from the heaven. OK, so this is what we desire. Right. Because we are from there. All right. We are from the heavens. And to prove that that's in uh, Philippians 320 for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for our salvation. The Lord Yahweh Shah. All right. So when you're breaking that down, our conversation, the word conversation, G, G4175 citizenship. So our citizenship or commonwealth or community is in heaven. A citizenship is where you belong or where you come from. All right. It's, it's just that simple. Let's continue. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the works whereby he has uh, able to even subdue all things unto himself. OK, so we are from the heavens fashioned in these chains of darkness, so to speak. Right. Which are the fleshy bodies awaiting to be changed or fashioned unto his likeness as his children. Right. Let's move forward. Psalms 1715. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Right. So this is why in the beginning, when Yahweh and the angels created the earth, they put a firmament over the earth to separate the outer atmosphere, which is the waters above from the inner atmosphere and the inside, which is in the waters below one body for the outer atmosphere, the heavenly and the other body for the inner which is the earthly, all right? And we have to go through, these, through this um, natural process, right? Uh, the sinful or wicked flesh. But after receiving this truth, this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, we can come back to righteousness, right? Which is where we're meant to be. Because remember, remember, righteousness cannot exist without wickedness. There has to be a two-part balance. First the bad, then the good. This is how this works, all right? I'm moving on to 1 Corinthians 15, 34. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fish, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of, of the terrestrial is another. Okay, so celestial and celestial bodies look similar but have two totally different makeups okay our earthly bodies were created to survive and inhabit the earth but our celestial bodies okay were made in heavens okay the exact atmosphere of heaven okay so when we break that down terrestrial which is g 1919 uh, epigaius epigaius greek word existing upon the earth earthly right now celestial g 2032 heavenly of the place where Yahweh Shah sitteth on the right hand of Yahweh in the heavens. Okay, just as the natural body, which is G5597, belonging to breath, is different from the spiritual body, G4152, relating to the spirit or soul. Okay, now let's continue. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star different from another star in glory, so also the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, meaning fleshly bodies. It is raised in incorruption, spiritual bodies. Okay. It is sown in dishonor and raised in glory. It is sown in weakness and raised in power. Okay. And Israel in Hebrew is Yasharala, which means prince of the power. Right. 
It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. And the last man, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. Right. So even when you go into the genealogy of Yahweh Shah and Luke, the third chapter, you see Adam was Yahweh Shah. Right. Now, how do we know Luke three thirty eight, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of Yahweh. OK. And the last Adam was also Yahweh Shah, the same person. See, the first time he came here, he went off big time. When he was in the garden, right? But the last time when he comes back, he's coming back in heavenly glory. And that's a future prophecy. Matter of fact, let's pull it. Let's get it. Revelations 1, 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, which are the chariots, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, meaning pierced him when he was crucified. Okay? So let's, let's continue. How be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. Right. So we went through the earthly process and now we're getting back to the heavenly. All right. So this is why Second Peter talks about Second Peter when Paul talks about our bodies being in the chains of darkness. Matter of fact, let's just get it. Second Peter two, four. For if God for if Yahweh spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Right. So that brings me to Jude one, six and the angels which kept not their first estate. OK, in the heavens, but left their own habitation. He has reserved them in everlasting chains under darkness until the until judgment of the great day. OK. All right. So the first man is of the earth again, earthly. The second man is of the Lord. All right. And as is and as the earthly, such are also they that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such as they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Wow. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Now, why is that? This is because, again, our conversation, our citizenship is in heaven where we belong, where we come from. We are gods. We cannot enter into the kingdom of the heavenly father in these corrupt chains of darkness, man. All right. So let's continue. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. And I love when the scriptures say that. Right. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. OK. We shall not all sleep, meaning meaning we shall not all taste death, death as the righteous men who died before us. Right. OK. And they will be the ones that will be raised up first. Or should I say beamed up first into those chariots. Right. So how do we know this? Simply we go to first Thessalonians 4.15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with a voice of the archangel, which is Michael, that mighty warrior and second commander of Yahweh Shah. Beautiful. And with the trump of Yahweh and the dead and Yahweh Shah shall be risen first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. What? Swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. See, it's that. It's that verse right there. That our ancestors understood the chariots of salvation, man, which inspired them to make that song. You see, Israel? Now, how beautiful is this, man? You know, we've been singing these songs our whole life and never really truly knew the meanings of them. All right. So anyway, <laughs> let's get back to it. Um, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be, ri shall be rise incorruptible and we shall be changed. Okay. Changed into what? The Most High's immortal, mighty X Men in celestial bodies with spiritual powers. <laughs> Baraka Thayahawa. And this is what we wait for, okay? I bet. So let me just calm down. Let me continue. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this more mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. 
O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? We're going to be laughing at death here, man. Beautiful. Let's continue. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Right? Okay. But thanks to Yahweh, which giveth us the victory through, our, through Yahweh Shah, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Okay, so there it is. All right, so this is why we must endure. All right, this truth is our comforter, right? And it should build us up in our spirit, giving us a rulership mentality as men. All right, so we won't ever die. We won't ever get sick. We won't ever get old. We won't ever be tired. You know, being the sons of the living power, we'll be able to bend the elements at will, y'all. You know, and Esau knows this. All right. This is why we out here fishing for the X-Men of the most high. You know, we are fishermen. Matter of fact, let me just let me just get that. Jeremiah 16, 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. All right. And this is what we're doing right now. OK, making these videos, going out on the highways and byways, fishing for the elect men of the Lord, using the Bible as the bait. Right. So whoever, so whosoever bites on it through its, inqu through its inquiries may be of the elect. This is how that works. So let's continue. So after I will send for many hunters and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. So after the elect men are sealed and changed into the X-Men of the Most High, the hunters will be the hunted. OK. In Revelation 615, the kings of the earth. And the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens of the rocks and the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb, which is Yahweh Shah, for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? Nothing living is going to be able to stand against the X-Men of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Nothing. Just know that. All right? Let's continue. For my eyes are upon their ways. They are not hid from my face. Neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. And first I will recompense their iniquity and their sins double. Because they have defiled my lands. They have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. And that's what Esau has done, right? Murdering us in cold blood out here in the streets, gunning down our women, kicking them in the stomach and shit while they're pregnant, you know, lynching and hanging our brothers, you know, putting them damn illegal chokeholds on us, killing us in front of our sons, in front of our daughters, in front of our babies and shit, you know, harassing us daily. You know, even when we go into our own house, these motherfuckers are standing in front of the doorway, blocking us, asking us for IDs. You know, we can't even go to the grocery store without these motherfucking devils fucking with us. All right. And this is about to be at an end. OK. Isaiah 41, 8, but thou Israel art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend, thou, though whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, thou art my servant, I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah. <laughs> strengthen us how? with spiritual power. So let's continue. I will help thee, yeah, I will uphold thee with, the, with thy right hand of my righteousness, thy right hand being Yahweh Shah. Behold, all, that, all, all they that were instanced against thee shall be ashamed and confounded, okay? Meaning they're not gonna believe what they're about to see or what they're about to witness. They're gonna be in tremendous fear, okay? And it's gonna fall upon all the nations when they see this. Let's continue. They shall be as nothing and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee. They, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of nothing. For I, the Lord God, will hold thy hand, thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob. Ye are men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Okay? So why do we call us? Why he call us worms? We are worms. What's a worm? Hmm? Worm is something that's helpless. That's defenseless out here. We are defenseless. OK, we are devoured daily by these motherfuckers out here. OK, and no man regardeth. The only one is the holy one of Israel. OK. 
Continue. Behold, I will make thee a new sharpening, a, a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. Meaning all these nations, big and small. OK, we are going to be the things that we're going to be capable of doing are going to be unheard of. We are going to be beating the fucking asses to powder, man. OK, and burning these motherfucking devils up and we're going to have fun while we're doing it. Thus said the most high. OK, let's continue. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and, and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. Okay? This is because we are not like anybody else, man. We aren't. Okay? The nations don't understand that. They don't understand who they've had in, this, in their possession all these years, man. Okay? Doing all these abominable, uh, detestable things unto us, man. They have no idea that they've been set up from the very, very beginning. A matter of fact, let's get it. Jeremiah 51 and 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, meaning the original creation. And Israel is the rod of thine inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. OK, the Lord of hosts, meaning armies. OK, and this is why Exodus 15, 3 says the Lord is the man of war. The Lord is his name. Let's continue. Thou art my battle axe and my weapons of war. With thee I will break in pieces the nations, and with thee I will destroy kingdoms. Okay, so you understand the Lord is a master war strategist, okay? Scattering us to the four corners of the earth was a brilliant move, man. In military terms, that's called tactical dispersion. When behind enemy lines, this tactic is used to make it more difficult for the enemies to spot infantry units when being attacked, right? So this is why the Most High's X-Men will be used to destroy kingdoms and nations all over the world at the same time, giving them no way to retaliate, regroup, or call for allies. Pure genius. You understand? So let's continue. And with thee I will break in pieces the horses and his rider, meaning their tanks and their Humvees and all their military vehicles. And with thee I will break in pieces their chariots and his rider. Their black, their black hawks, choppers, their raptors, and their fighter jets, just like Esau shows in his movies, you know, with his superheroes. We're going to be jumping up in the sky and grabbing the motherfuckers and throwing them to the ground like paper, man. Okay? And with thee also I will break in pieces the man and the woman. And with thee I will break in pieces old and young. And with thee I will break in pieces the young man and the maid. And I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock, meaning all them false prophets and their blind followers, right? And with thee I will break in pieces the husband and his yoke of oxen. And with thee I will break in pieces captains and rulers, meaning their presidents, their governments, their politicians and congressmen, their colonels and generals, their officers and marines, their green berets, every last one of them motherfuckers will be destroying through the power of the X-Men of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, man. Okay? Because that's one thing for sure. These nations are ignorant, priding themselves on being wise. But if only they knew Right. If only they knew the power, the, the power that Yahweh Bashem and Yahweh Shah is going to give unto his elect men, man. We're going to be able to kill thousands, man. Undeniable, man. And these people don't understand that. Right. As a matter of fact, let's get it. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, 28. For they have for they are for they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they would understand this. OK, that they would consider their latter end. But they won't because their pride won't allow them. All right. Their judgment has already been set for what they have done. Let's continue. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight? Except the rock be sold, had sold them and the Lord had shut them up for their rock is not like our rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. OK, flight meaning kill. So how can one man kill a thousand and two of us are going to be able to kill 10,000? OK. All right. When we're changed back into our glory. OK. And they will be utterly destroyed and they, all the nations will be amazed and in great fear of the princes of the power, man. And this is how this works. Matter of fact, let's pull up Micah 716. The nations shall see and be confounded at all their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouths and their ears shall be death and they shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth and they shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. Let's get another one. Psalms 144. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. My goodness 
and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and he whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. As men of war, the Most High has brought us up for this purpose, man. The power, the power we will have, the Heavenly Father will give us. Man, you have no idea. Our spirits will be so charged up, even the devils and demons will be subjected under us, man. Now that's power. Matter of fact, let's get it. Luke 10, 17. And the 70th return again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power tr to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subjected unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. As that's our conversation, our citizenship in heaven, right? All this because we are the children of Israel, man. All right. And then that day they're going to exercise. We're going to exercise every last one of them demons on these heathens, man, through the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. All right. Psalms 1832. It is Yahweh that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet. He setteth me upon high places. He teaches my hands to war so that my so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. That thou has given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand has holded me up, and thy gentleness has made me great. Thou has enlarged my steps under me, that my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. I have wounded them that they were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet, for thou has girded me with the strength unto the battle. Though thou hast subdued, un, subdued under me those that rose up against me, thou hast also given me the necks of thine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They cry, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then, then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out into the dirt as, as dirt into the streets, man. Okay? And this is long-awaited recompense of the wicked of all the nations and their iniquities, man. Let's get another one. Psalms 10, 1, 10. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion, Israel. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in that day of thy power and the beauty of the holiness from the womb of the morning. For thou, for thou hast the dew of thy youth. How beautiful is that, man? At last, the worms of the earth will, devour, will be devoured no more, man. The true rulers will awaken, all right, out of this slumber that we've been in. Right. And take for our rightful place, our true inheritance as rulers forever bounding in ultimate spiritual power, man. You know, Isaiah 40, 28, thou has not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and he turned them that, that might and he them and, and to them that he and to him that have no might. He increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall re renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Right? Now that's everlasting power. Right? And see, the elites know this. All right? Trumps know this, hence why he built a militarized space station in outer space. Even the former president, Ronald Reagan, knew this. All right. When talking about the alien, uh, uh, talking about the aliens being among us, we are the aliens. Israel are the aliens patiently awaiting for the time of judgment. So so until they continue to do what they do unto us to this day, just as scripture says, terror shall come upon them on every side, man. And there'll be no excuse nor pity for what will be done to them in that day, man. And that's it. Tick tock, tick tock. So endure, Yasharala. Unlimited power is coming on to you, man. And for all this, I want to say, call hello, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bashem, Rakakwadash, and the Baba Ball. And it's on to the next one. Y'all willing? I'm out.